I'm waiting for an ice cream truck to drive away before officially starting this video. An update on the ice cream, it's idling outside our house. So, we're still gonna wait. Hello everyone, Sean here. I'm gonna be talking about my favorite winter reads. We will start with the, the lowest rated and we will work our way up. So the first book I have that I rated 3.75 stars is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. Now this is considered a classic of science fiction, dystopia, maybe just literature in general. And while it was incredible that Huxley had these ideas at the time that he wrote it, that's about all I can say that I I particularly enjoyed. And what I mean by that is the book was written in 1931, I believe published in 1932, and in the book there's cloning. There's basically there the creation of a perfect society that is stratified. So you have some um, people, you know, that you are growing in test tubes that are, you know, meant to be the thinkers and leaders and the elite. And then you're also growing people that are supposed to be like the working class and how they're structured. They're, I think they're um, the best are like the alphas and then there's the betas, epsilons, gammas, all that. And so I, I, that idea, that the structured caste system idea, especially the, like the naming, uh, we see in science fiction uh, and fantasy for that matter, you know, throughout, I th you know, I don't know if he was like the first, but probably close to one of the first. And again, he has this, basically this cloning, right? So you, the whole beginning of the book is this really detailed section about like basically how people are birthed and created uh, in this future society and how terms like mother and father are dirty words because no one is is brought you know into the world in that way anymore uh, with the exception of uh, very few but for the most part the rest of society has moved on to this more industrial way of bringing forth human life but basically brave new world seems to be a look at what he sees as the decline of western civilization so there is like the loss of religion or the loss of the traditional family values or even the family itself a loosening of morals in his eyes and you know even just like people you know being married to each other is something that's no longer in effect in this society and this is seen as bad by Aldous Huxley. So is it a great book? I Again, I think probably for its time. I think as a science fiction book, it's great. I The ending, looking back on it, I think it worked. I think it's kind of the ending that had to happen. But did I love it? No. And again, there is there are parts of the book that I really enjoy. There is a character who, two characters actually, who have like, this really long debate between this new, like the, the ideals of this new society versus the ideals of older civilizations. And it's interesting reading, but I, again, I don't know if it's mandatory reading or especially the writing style for me did not, was not really my cup of tea. So a classic of science fiction, but maybe not one I would probably revisit. So at four stars, I have the Lathe of Heaven by Ursula Le Guin. So this is a book that I listen to uh, only through audiobooks or through the audiobook. So it's actually one I, I might want to go back someday and reread. But basically the gist of it is there is a man named George Orr who when he dreams, he has what is called effective dreaming. So his dreams can manipulate the fabric of the universe basically it manip manipulates reality so you know at one point he goes to sleep and you know something terrible happens and and this is much of a spoiler i'll try to stay away from spoilers but he first realizes this when he's a kid 
he has this argument, I think, with his aunt, and he dreams that she gets in a car accident. And then the next day, that has happened. His aunt used to live with him and his parents, but now, like, that never happened. It's a very out there plot, but I think it's handled well. I think there are good observations um, regarding, like, racism, uh, again, utopia, dystopia, that sort of thing. There's actually some interesting things about plague, which is kind of weird. Um, and population growth, climate change, all sorts of things. So she's hitting on big themes through this guy who can affect reality in such giant world changing ways. So it's a it's an interesting book. I did read that it's kind of like her tribute to Philip K. Dick in a way. I think she did a, a fantastic job. I, I liked the book. I, I think there are some, some deep thoughts in it, but one I'll probably have to revisit at some point. And I definitely look forward to reading more Ursula Le Guin. All right, and another one I gave four stars. This is Brief Interviews with Hideous Men by David Foster Wallace. This is a short story collection. And I think the third book I've read by David Foster Wallace, um, and I think, uh, yeah, the first short story collection I've read by him. So at this point, I've read Infinite Jest, his very famous novel. I've read Consider the Lobster, which is essays, and this is the first time reading short stories. Of the three I've read, probably this is my least favorite. I enjoy Infinite Jest quite a bit more. I enjoy Consider the Lobster quite a bit more. But this one, again, they are short stories. Some of them are absolutely great, hilarious, insightful, fantastic short stories. And some of them are plain bizarre. There's one that I couldn't make head nor tail of. Church Not Made With Hands. If anyone's read Church Not Made With Hands, that short story, and it can shed some, some light on that, I'd love to hear it because it is quite strange. I didn't follow it really whatsoever. But the brief interviews with Hideous Men, that short story, that actually comes back. Uh, it's at the beginning, it's in the middle, there's a few of them. But those are usually their, usually first person kind of like interviews uh, with various men. <laughs> really, I'm doing a great job describing <laughs> what it's about. But they're usually hideous men, not great men. Hideous being kind of gross, misogynistic. And so those are kind of tough to get through because you're like, I don't like any of these guys. Those are actually some of my least favorite parts of the book. And since it's kind of recurring, that's why I dropped it down. It's not that they're bad, they just weren't my favorite part. Uh, there is one that I really enjoyed. Actually, there's a couple that I really enjoyed. There's one where there is, it's almost like a a test, like it gives you a scenario, he'll write out the scenario, and then be like, what would you do? And then like, it's like him answering it. But the best part of that um, part of the short story is at some point he breaks the fourth wall and it's like consider that you're you know pop quiz it says pop quiz consider that you're a, a writer and you're writing a short story where everything's a pop quiz is this even a good idea and he starts like going off about how he thinks he's realizing the whole thing was a dumb idea and how he wishes he could go back and stop writing it but he's con you know uh, basically like he has to at this point. It's, it's very funny. So like, I did enjoy that one. And then he had another one about celebrity culture in you know Los Angeles, but written like it's the Odyssey or something. It's written like, or the Iliad. And um, I really enjoyed that one as well. So I don't know if this would be the first David Foster Wallace uh, book I would suggest to someone. Honestly, I think one of his essay collections, I haven't read the other ones, but I would actually recommend Consider the Lobster first or again maybe another essay collection because um you get his sense of humor through those but they're a little easier to follow than some of these short stories which again some of them lost me a little bit just because i was like i don't know what's happening in this and speaking of not knowing what's happening at all search history by eugene Lim. this is my second favorite i guess of the uh the quarter Gave us 4.25 stars, just edging out brief interviews with Hideous Men and Lathe of Heaven. Uh, this book, I don't even know how to begin to describe it. It's very experimental, very avant-garde. Basically, I'm gonna try to try to say basically, 
Um, there is a character named Frank Exit who you never even really see, but he has died. And so you get the perspectives of his friends, acquaintances, and one friend in particular thinks that Frank Exit's soul basically has gone into this, I think, like, cyborg dog. <laughs> and uh, so he's trying to get the dog because he thinks his friend's spirit is in there or he's been reincarnated as it interspersed between that bizarre uh plot is the friends getting together just in a coffee shop and talking about uh various challenges they're facing so they are all uh, of asian descent so there's a lot of discussion of living as the children of immigrants um, growing up in Asian households. There's also parts that uh, interject where we will say autobiographical interlude, which I'm assuming um, that is actually Eugene Lim talking about his own life. I'm not positive, um, but also just growing up um, in an Asian household. So uh, it's a short little book. It's only like 180 some pages. Um, but it is very interesting. And again, there's there's also like discussions of uh, artificial intelligence. There's this person who's trying to create um, one of the friends, if I remember correctly. And again, it's not super important to the plot, but one of the friends is uh, trying to create an, an AI that can write a book that would win a literary award, which I thought was really funny. So they that friend wants the other friends to record all their conversations in the coffee shop that way they can upload the conversations to the ai and help get you know more normal uh speaking i guess dialogue for the book it's a great little book uh, i think it'll leave your scratching your head a little bit definitely left me scratching my head it's a lot of ideas in such a little book so i uh, highly recommend if you're looking for one just kind of you know just to see if you can get something out of it um, definitely one I'll reread, and it's definitely one I just I wrote a ton in the margins, um, trying to trying to piece it together. So getting to the two five star reads uh, would be kind of go together. Obviously, you'll see in a second the fifth season and the Obelisk Gate, both by N. K. Jemison. First two books of the Broken Earth trilogy. So Elliot was going to uh, read the fifth season. And then I just was like, oh, I'll read that too. And then I picked it up first because I, I was like, well, I read slower. And then I blew through it really fast. And then I blew through the second one really fast. Uh, I enjoyed them both a ton. So th those are my first like fantasy books I've read in a while. Um, obviously, I had some, some science fiction mixed in with the other ones. But um, I'd say Broken Earth feels a little bit more fantasy fantasy because there is magic there are people using magic uh to in this case manipulate um tectonic plates in the earth but if you've not yet read if you've not read yet read uh the fifth, fifth season um i highly highly recommend it uh i do think it deserves all the praise it has received um it deals with very um difficult topics uh, especially with racism uh, in the book obviously like the allegory um, is the the magic users again people can move the earth um, are discriminated against because people fear them there's this this idea that you know they're necessary because the earth itself is you know constantly in flux there's always like these earthquakes or volcanoes um, so they need the magic users, they're called origins, uh, they need them to stop catastrophe, natural disasters, but that's about it. They're, that's their use, um, and that's what they're used for. Anything beyond that, um, they're just happy to be alive, because a lot of times in smaller villages, if people find out you have uh, the ability of orogeny, um, they kill you, because they fear you. So that is the world it's a grim world 
Uh, you do follow a few different perspectives. If you've been on the fence about reading it, you've probably heard that it does have a uh, use of second person, um, but I would not let that dissuade you from reading it because um, you get used to it. Uh, I read this one partially and also listened to the audiobook, um, and you know it, it. You get used to it. Um, you get used to it. See, you are getting used to it. Uh, so. <laughs> Um, 100% uh, fantastic story. Um, I'm starting the third one already. It does get pretty uh, dark. It's not, 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 not a happy story. It is very grim. Um, but at the same time, uh, I like where I like where it's going. I like the world. I like the magic. And it's fast paced. I mean, it, you know, if you if you can get past the the second person thing, you know, if you really like, I really don't like that. Uh, I still think give it a shot because it it really is a fast paced but you know gripping and I think important book. So um, check it out and hopefully I'll be done with the third one here soon and I can maybe discuss the whole trilogy. But that is it for the best books I read in. The winter the winter months so thank you for watching uh if you've read any of these let me know let me know what you think of the fifth season obelisk gate in particular um because i'm sure a lot of you have read that already i'm late to the party if there are any david foster wallace fans out there let me know uh where you stand are you a essay person are you a novel person short story person um i think my next david foster wallace foray will be more short stories i'm thinking but I'm also tempted to maybe read another novel of his, so we'll see. But anyways, thank you for watching, and it has been a good old time.